Hi guys, and today I'll be playing Lucky Day. And we play as a character who just has a string of good luck. So one day they find out it might be too good to be true. Let's start. Who I am again? What name should I put? Let me put James. Your phone buzzed as you walked out of the office building. Taking it out of your pocket, you spot a new message from a friend. The weekend wasn't too busy for you. Not until now, that is. Okay, our friend. Hey, can you drop by the pet store and buy me some stuff? It's not too far from your workplace. Need it ASAP. Sent you the money already. Thanks. Seriously, did he even ask if you were okay with, with doing that? What if they were actually busy? What then? What if, you, if right after your prior engagement you had to save an orphan from a burning building? Whatever. You aren't doing any noble causes like saving orphans from burning buildings today. Or any day for that matter. Being the great, wonderful friend that you are, you send off a reply as you get in your car. Strapping in the seatbelt and starting the engine, you drive in the direction of the pet store. As your friend said, it wasn't really that far. Pulling into the crowded parking lot, you hype yourself up to get out of the car into the store. Regardless of your thoughts on pets and animals, you really didn't want to be in a crowded place right now, especially at a pet store where irresponsible owners could be rampant. That's for sure. You just want to be want a quiet weekend. You want to go home and sleep, or indulge in a hobby, but mostly sleep. After a few seconds of mental ping pong, you turn the engine off and get out of your car, wallet in hand. It's gonna be quick, in and out. You can be placed on speed run a <laughs> speedrun website for how fast you'll get the supplies. With these thoughts hyping you up, you step inside the crowded store. Here's a pet shop. Find you a Home Depot. Walking briskly with your phone in one hand, you scan the signs near the tops of the aisles as you search for what you have pick up, picked up with your friend. Ow. Uh-oh. Looks like you bumped into someone. Sorry about that. You help the person up. The person gives you a blank look, though he seems apologetic as he shakes his head. No, it's my fault. I was just standing there in the middle of the aisle. Sorry. He kind of looks like he's, go he's going to cry with him the way his mouth is pressed into a thin, trembling lip. Line? This guy just looks lost in general. What kind of person spaced out and in the middle of an aisle anyway? Was he lost or something? The question was answered as his gaze wanders again. Anyone could tell that this guy was looking for something but was too lost, and maybe even a bit overwhelmed. It was a weekend and the store was busy. There were no employees around to help this guy. His face paled a bit as he kept turning in all sorts of directions, trying to find something, but was too overwhelmed to take a single step forward. You could help him, but it'd be a time loss to the speedrun challenge you imposed on yourself before stepping foot outside your car. Um, go on or help him. Let's help him. You may not be saving orphans from a burning building, but you could probably help this random guy. Hey, do you need to find need help finding something? The guy turns to look at you and nods wordlessly. So, what do you need help finding? The hamsters. He mumbles it out, looking down at his beat. Hamsters? He nods and looks at your face. Hamsters. He nods again. It didn't really look like he was looking at you. More like he was looking at something behind you or at your forehead. Maybe he was just bad at eye contact. Okay, let's go then. You look around and spot the indicating products related to small animals. Seems like a good place to start. Walking over, you glance over your shoulder to make sure he was following along. He followed closely, though made sure he kept some distance so as to not touch you on accident. Seems like he avoided touching people at the flag, expertly weaving between people without so as much as brushing against them. After some walking, you two finally arrived at the glass displays. Hamsters were sleeping in the bedding, some snipping around while others drank water and ran in a wheel. The guy you helped had a slight smile as he watched them, eyes soft. The expression was a far cry from the nervous wreck you had bumped into a few minutes ago. Thank you. He was still looking at the hamsters as he spoke. As you're about to turn to leave, he spoke again. Hey, what's your name? If you don't mind me mind telling me, that is. I didn't get a chance to ask. James, I gotta go now. Glad I could help. You had to quickly as you leave to grab what you needed. As you walked around the store, I felt like something was behind you the whole time. But whenever you looked behind you, nothing eye-catching was in your vision. Brushing it off as paranoia, you head to the checkout and carry the bags to your car. It's a quiet drive to your friend's house. 
A dull ache was starting to bloom in your head. You seemed to understand why they ended up asking you to do this. The distance you had to drive was pretty far. Oh, what a nice house. Eventually, you pull into the neighborhood. It didn't take long to find your friend's house swipe park. Quickly sending a text to your friend that you're outside in the driveway, you lean back in your car, your chair, and sigh. Home was so close and yet so far. You really wonder if the guy from the pet store was still looking at the hamsters. How nice to help someone out. Before you could uh, think about it a bit more, there's a knock on your window. Your friend gives you a wise smile as you open the door. You are a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hand your friend the goods. They thank you again. Here, I made too much to eat and I know you love this stuff. Oh, thanks. A $10 bill was sitting on top, held in place by their thumb. You take the wrapped food from their hands, it's still warm, freshly made it seems. You pocket the bill as well. Close in the door, car door, you wave goodbye as you pull out the driveway. You got some good food and $10 in gas money. Uh, the thought of a warm, home-cooked meal helps you deal with the headache that was plaguing you better. Maybe this wasn't a total waste of time after all. You hope that two people, sure their good deeds will be awarded one way or another. What goes around comes back around, right? At least that's what you hoped would happen. The following week, it felt like someone was out to get you. You were met with trouble at practically every turn, and by the end of the week, you were absolutely exhausted. At its worst, it felt like whatever higher being existed was trying to strike you down in the worst possible way. At its best, it was, it was an inconvenience annoying you left and right as you tried to survive the day. Whichever end of the spectrum it was, each day ended with you stumbling into your home and passing out in exhaustion. Not even the weekends were saved. The time was taken up searching for your basketball and frantically fixing tons of errors and mistakes on the team project. Honestly, you wish you could catch a break already. Enough of this bullshit week. Your superpowers are real, you probably want time manipulation so you can pause everything and sleep for 10 years. Fortunately, you weren't that lucky. Staring at the day on your phone, you sigh and shut it off. It's a new week. Hopefully this one's better than the last. Clocking out and changing out of your uniform, you briefly wonder if you should take a more scenic route home. There was still a bit of daylight to burn, after all. A few extra steps wouldn't hurt. Walking down the street, you absentmindedly decide to walk through the nearby neighborhood. The park was nearby and the trees, the houses looked pretty. The sidewalk lined with tall trees that swayed gently in the breeze. The ambience and general vibe always seemed to have a calming effect. You enjoyed taking this route after a tiring shift. Passing by the houses one by one, your eyes eventually landed on the yard sale sign. You pumped your wallet. Did you carry cash today? Curious, you followed the sign and eventually came up to a house with its yard full of knickknacks and other such things. The homeowner greeted you as you expected what was for sale. Nothing was particularly eye-catching, not until you noticed a familiar logo. Picking it up, you realized it was an official plush from one of your favorite pieces of media. It was produced in limited quantity, with second-hand sales and auction sites costing a hundred times more than the original price. You were shocked to find uh, such sought-after merchandise in such perfect condition, aside from the very light wear and such. Homer must have noticed your piqued interest as you're inspecting the item in shock. There was no way in hell you're going to pass up this opportunity. You deserve to treat yourself for once, especially after all that's happened. You quickly pull out your wallet and ask for the seller how much they wanted. Upon hearing the, f the price, you had to stop your job hitting the floor. There's no way you were selling it for that cheap. Paying out the cash, you walked away from the yard sale, uh, sale a happy camper. At least that made our week. If you could, you'd throw in a skip and click your heels together like a whimsical fellow living in the Victorian area. Quickly made your way home, protecting your new britches with your life. When you arrived, you looked for a spot in your house to display your new item. Eventually, you found some space in your room. You have a nice home. Suddenly, on the shelf, shelf in your room, you made some space and put it in place. You still couldn't believe your luck. Maybe things were turning, taking a turn for the better after all. Huh? You look around your room and then up at the smoke detector. Did it beep? You squint at the detector before grabbing a chair and testing the battery. It's fine. Then what was that? What the hell is that beeping noise? Looking around, you back yourself into a corner. After a bit, you heard another beep. You came in the direction of... You stand in front of the shelf, squinting. Eventually, another beep sound. It was coming from the newly purchased plush. Picking it off the shelf, you back up and sit on your bed, taking a closer look. The 
beef was definitely coming from here. But did you really want to cut it open? He had just bought it, not to mention how sought, sought after this particular piece of merchandise was. Okay, so I have three choices. Let's just save. Let's leave it alone, crack it open. Let's <laughs> open it. If I hear beeps from it, like that's weird. Alright, so we carry it to the kitchen and set it on the counter. Taking out a knife, you silently apologize to your fellow fans as you prepare to take out cut into the merch. It's difficult to summon the resolve to actually start. After a few seconds of staring, you realize there's a tiny little slit in the fabric. You put the knife down and push your finger in. Tearing it open a bit wider, your finger brushes against something hard. Picking out some stuff and you reach in and pull out a small object hidden within. Oh. That's a camera? No. That's a small camera that was hidden inside the plush you just bought. Okay. You stare at the camera until it beats again, wincing at the sound. Expecting the camera, you find that there's a slot in it for an SD card. Popping it- oh my god, small camera. That's so scary, people can hide those anywhere. Popping it out, you leave the kitchen. Quickly grabbing the laptop from your room, you turn to your living room and open it up. The SD card easily inserts into the slot, and you're able to explore the contents. You navigate to the folder directory and look at the contents. Several videos were saved on it. Were saved on it, and you watch them one by one. As you go through the recordings, you come across what seems to be a test recording. Is that a pair of hands is up to the camera, positioning it within what looks like stuffing? You make a wild guess that this is what it was planted planted in the plush. When you back up, you can see it's place more clearly. That's is that the guy you met from the pet store, like from like a week ago? What the hell? You watch him over curiosity as he walks to the yard sale and hands it to the homeowner who seems eager to be able to sell another item. Oh my god. Before I could go through another video, a knock on your door makes your blood run cold. You slowly turn towards the sound, grabbing the knife from the counter and walk cautiously to the front door. Looking through the people on the door, you feel the hairs on your neck rise. Oh my god, he follow you home. It's him. He's just standing there awkwardly waiting for you to open the door. Wait, I'll call the police. The cloth mask is over his face, but you recognize a distinct blonde hair with strawberry blonde tips. You're not sure what to do at this point. Backing away from the door, you consider your options. Call the cops. No, they wouldn't get here in time. I mean, you can scream for help. I, I don't know if the walls are soundproof. Let him in. No, you're not that stupid. He's definitely going to do something. Run. Where your car is in the garage, not a bad choice actually. As quietly as you can, you pocket your keys and make your way to your car in the garage. Hopping in your car, you grip the steering wheel with one hand, key in the ignition. Oh. The garage door opens pretty slowly, but if you time it just right, you can drive out with only a few scratches on the roof. Your life is worth more than the car you got from a second hand dealership. Start so in the car, you open the garage. The moment is wide enough, you slam your foot on the gas. Closing out of the garage, you turn as quickly as you can out of the driveway and make your escape. In the rear view mirror, you can see the stranger watching you drive off. But, wait, what, but if you just run away, what will he do? Considering your options, you decide to... <laughs> I'm gonna run him over with the car, cause what the freak? That's weird. Uh, hit him with your car, turn the car around. <laughs> Try hitting him with your car. You know, let's just run him over. You make a U-turn and drive back towards your house. He's in the middle of the road now, surprised to see you came back. It looks like he made an attempt to run after the car. Now stopping, you press on the gas, aiming right for him. When he realizes you're about to run him over, he tries to run out of the way, but you chase him down until you manage to hit him with your car. <laughs> oh god. Bringing the car to a stop, you step out and look at the man who collapsed on the road. Is he dead? Did you just kill a man? Well, you kind of had it coming, with the whole hidden camera and showing up at your house and stuff. You hope your neighbors didn't just wait to see you running over someone. Taking your phone out of your pocket, you call the police and text your friend. Despite barely even starting, looks like this week's the best. <laughs> didn't you hit and run? <laughs> okay, so this time I'm just gonna go on my way and like not help him at all because he just seems to bring trouble. You didn't have time, you are already tired as it is and you just wanted to head home. Hell, you didn't even want to be here. Silently wishing the stranger the best, you head on your way to the aisle and pick up what your friend needed. Carrying the bag back to your car, you start the engine and pull out of the parking lot. 
It's a quiet drive to your friend's house. A dull ache was starting to bloom in your head. You quickly send a text to your friend that you're outside in a driveway. You just lean back in your chair and sigh. Home was so close and yet so far. We would wonder if the guy from the pet store found what he was looking for. Before you can think about it even more, there's a knock on your window. Your friend gives you a wide smile as you open the door. You're a lifesaver, and they say, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, we got some food. It wasn't a waste of time after all. The coming weeks go by as normal, and nothing out of the ordinary happens, as expected. I think one in a week. I think weird happens. The moral of the story is to not, like, help people all that willingly like that. So, let me just leave the toy, uh, the stuffed flesh alone. You ignore it and choose not to cut it open. You're just grateful you managed to get such a steal and such a rare plush. There's no way you'll butcher your new merch in here mere minutes after buying it. After putting it in its place, you get on your laptop and spend the rest of the evening browsing the web before heading to bed. So you didn't come. Today was pretty good. A package would be coming by the end of the day. Maybe it was all the stress stockpiling during the last week, but you made an impulse to buy when online window shopping. Just to treat yourself. You had completely forgotten about it until you woke up to an email from the website. It would be delivered by 9pm. A glass of the 9 o'clock is all you need to keep the, you facing your realm. Any minute now, ever since you arrived home from work, you have been biding your time. Catching up on shows, watching lengthy video essays, or just mindless doom scrolling on social media. You tried to distract yourself from the excitement of an incoming package. Another walk around the kitchen counter, you check the phone again, look at the doorway. No doorbell ring, no knock, another walk around it is. Yeah, it was loud. Halfway through what felt like the hundredth million lap around the kitchen, you finally heard a knock at the door. Practically bolting the door, you open the door and sign for the signature. Your highly anticipated impulse buy was finally here. Was it worth it? Probably not. But you deserve a treat after surviving the last week. Setting the box in the kitchen counter, you cut open the packaging and unbox the purchase you made. As you were discarding the leftover packaging and boxes, you heard something plastically hit the floor. Crashing down to pick it up, you came across a USB flash drive. Weird, you didn't order this. Did it fall into the box by accident? Is this someone else's order? Pocking it for now, you finish, de finish cleaning up and head over to your room. Once you're sitting comfortably with the laptop in your lap, you plug in the flash drive and open up its contents. It's hard to stop your jaw from hitting the trackpad. Hundreds if not thousands of folders each labeled with its contents. The full first folder catches your eye. It's a popular show you have been wanting to watch recently, but it was taken off the air. How do you stock us this quickly? Clicking in, your eyes almost bulge out of your skull as its contents reveal every episode in high quality. We quickly back out and start going through the other folders. Music video games with emulators, TV shows, and animation. The flash drive carried everything of interest. Could something like this really be ordered on an online retailer? Whatever the case may be, you're definitely, <laughs> definitely holding on to this. As you explore the folders, you eventually come across a folder that was hidden inside an empty one. Clicking on it informs you that you need administrative privilege to enable viewing and editing. What could possibly be in here? None of the other folders so far has something like this. Um, so we have a save option here. Let's open the folder anyway. You decide to open the folder. The laptop's, laptop seems to lag a bit as it struggles to load its contents. However, once it loads, you can feel your blood run cold. Countless photos and videos. The subject varied from each, but they all shared a common trait. They were all related to you. Your house, your car, your belongings, you, you, you. A pit begins to <laughs> This is all in like one day, isn't it? A pit begins to form in your stomach as you scroll through the folder. It's practically never ending. Whoever took these photos and vid videos have been telling you for the past week. The thought makes you sick. You have been so overwhelmed you fail to realize you're being stalked. Pornora sets in as you quickly get up from where you're sitting, looking around. Your window curtain is open, just a crack. Close the curtains, you grab your laptop. Opening your closet, you take a seat in the dark and open your laptop back up. You use this flash drive as evidence, couldn't you? Would the police ever believe you? Oh, this flash drive I randomly found that totally doesn't belong to me has photos and videos of my house. Yeah, right, they definitely believe that. You definitely wouldn't be written off as a nut job wasting the precious time of the police. 
As you rack your brain for ideas, a light bulb switches on. What if you could investigate things yourself? Looking at one of the photos and the image of a shirt you had lost, you open the properties for the pic. There. The metadata for the image file. Damn, whoever took these photos had to use a pretty expensive camera. As you scroll through the metadata, your eyes land on the GPS section. Latitude and longitude. Taking your phone out and opening the map, map, a map app, you type in the coordinates you saw on screen. Location wasn't too far away, walking distance. <laughs> right, you're doing this, so let's take a cop with you. Crawling out of your closet, you stand up and put your laptop away. As you put a jacket on, you consider bringing your weapon. This is armoring knife in the drunk drawer will have to do. Bringing an entire kitchen knife wouldn't be good unless you want to be mistaken as a serial killer. Armed and ready, you start heading out to where the images were taken. After a bit of walking and a few detours to avoid being seen by cars, you arrive at your destination. You find yourself in an old park. Nature seems to have been reclaiming the space with all the overgrown grass and plants. Checking on the map app, it's clear this is where the photo was taken. Some sort of clue had to be nearby. Turning on the flashlight on your phone, you begin to search as you part the tar grass with your other hand to see the ground better. A bit more searching, you come across a cardboard box that sticks out more than the trash you've seen. It was notably cleaner, and it looks like whoever had put it there was trying to hide it if, like, the cloth to cover it, and it was, it was anything to go by. Holding your breath, you pull the cloth off and open the box up. It's the shirt you lost, man, why would you go by yourself? And a sock that you thought had gone missing in the wash. Not the lint from the lint tray of your dryer? You can feel the anxiety that has been rising in your chest, seize your heart as you go through the other contents of the box. Who did this? Why? Why you? In your state of paranoia, you suddenly become aware of something watching you, a presence right behind you. The realization makes your blood run cold. You rarely have the time to reach for your Swiss Army knife before a cloth is over your nose and mouth. Ah. Apparently around desperately, you try to scream for help, only for the cloth and hand over your face to muffle your cries. Lungs burning, you're left with no choice but to inhale the cloth. It isn't long before your head grows fuzzy and your body goes limp. The last thing you see is a man with blonde hair, eyes apologetic as his mouth opens to speak. Sorry. Secret stash. Oh. Okay, let's delete the old file and cherish your newfound gold mine. You decide to just delete the folder. It's probably some residual, residual files or personal files belonging to the old owner. Sucks for them, this gold mine is now yours. Leaving the folder, you came to go to the older folders on the drive. It's beginning to get late. You have no idea how long you were scrolling until you looked at the time. There really was a lot of stuff on the little flash drive. If it wasn't a laptop, you wind down and get ready for bed. What a lucky day. It's your day off today. One of the two you'll have off the week. You spend most of the day lounging around until you decide to get something more productive done. Opening your trusty laptop, you start absentmindedly surfing the web until a light bulb lit in your, up in your head. Nowadays, there are a ton of streaming or premium services for everything unimaginable. Television, online video gameplay, music. Split across different apps instead of one consolidated site for each form of media. It's easy to have your wallet drained in the span of a month. Looking at your bank account statement from the last month, you decide that today you'll be canceling your subscriptions to a few services. That's money spent for ads for your streaming should definitely be spent some better somewhere else. Starting with the most expensive service you're subscribed to, you navigate to the site and open up the account settings. On the payment page, you skim over as you scroll to the bottom to cancel. However, something catches your eye. The next payment, due date. Usually this one renews at around the same time every month, tomorrow it will renew. At least that's what you remember. Looking at the day on the page, it's due next month instead of tomorrow. That's strange. Checking your brain account statement again, you can confirm with your thoughts. You paid for the service a month ago, so it should be due around this time of the month rather than next month. No recent transactions or pending balance notices indicate that you paid it early, to early either. Keeping the tab open, you go down the list of subscription services you want to cancel. Each one has the same disparity in due payments. Change your password. A lot of options here. Um, cancel it later instead of now. Let's investigate further. That's not right. 
Clicking on payment information, you view the details in the section. Immediately your eyes lock in the payment method. Every subscription service is linked to your card, but what you know and what you're seeing are two different things. Underneath the payment plan is a PayPal that you didn't recognize linked to your account. That's definitely not right. You really go through each account and find that you're, they're all linked to the same PayPal. Did you get hacked? But why would, why would you pay for it? This is, isn't the point of hacking someone else's account is to leech off their benefits. You take note of the email address linked to the payment method and open up the email composer. Determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, you type in a short message and send it off. There are a few questions on your mind, but you keep your email short and straight to the point. Sending the email on its way, you lean back in your chair, staring at the ceiling to think. After a few minutes, you get a notification. Leaning forward, you see that it's a reply from the email. The initial message you sent was a question of whether or not they knew their PayPal was linked to several of your accounts. You expected it to be a misunderstanding, but the reply you got filled you with unease. I linked it to your account on purpose. Sorry, am I bother? Am I bother? Can I answer yes? Who the hell was this person? Why would they pay for your subscriptions themselves? Typing up another reply, you ask them exactly that. You get a response a few minutes later. I'm Oliver Morgan. As for why, well, it's because I like you. You weren't sure if you felt flattered. <laughs> why would you feel flattered, creeped out? The name this person gave you rang no bells whatsoever. After a few more back and forth emails, you end up becoming more and more creeped out. The general tone of his messages were polite, but the content of each one unnerved you. Each one just preached about how he loved you, having been watching you for a while. Apparently, he had seen you worrying about the subscriptions and took it upon himself to help you. At this point, you were thoroughly creeped out. Typing your final email, you ask him to leave you alone and you call the authorities. Sending it off, you block his address and start changing your passwords. You cancel all the payments as well. And nice as it was to have all of this free stuff handed to you on the silver platter, the situation was just too creepy. Once you are finished, you shut your laptop off and got up to get ready for bed. That night, you double check the, win the locks of windows around your house, just in case. Uh oh, a knocking sound wakes you up. Where's it coming from? Rolling over, you check, out, check the time, 5 a.m. Who the hell is knocking your door this early in the morning? As you get up, the knocking gets more and more intense. First, we're practically slamming on the door as you groggily got up. Open the door to your room, you abruptly ran into something. Oh, you are going to our house. Well, actually, it's someone. Looking at their face, you're met with a surprised look from a blonde man. Have you seen this guy somewhere else before? Your resistance sets in, causing you to jump away and slam the door shut in his face. What the hell are you doing in my house? I just wanted to talk. Did you break in? Well, I mean, I did, but you weren't having this. Right into your bed, you start dialing the police. Without you holding the door shut, Oliver, oh no, opens it. When he sees you on the phone with the police, he quickly walks over to try to stop you. Pushing him away when he gets too close, you try to escape somewhere else. However, a grip on your ankle stops you in place. Looking down, Oliver is grabbing your ankle with both hands, looking up at you pleadingly. Can't we just talk? Man, you guys were never in a relationship to begin with, so why does that matter? Hit him in the head, give him the boot. Hit him with your foot, because they're talking to him, then kick him in the head. <laughs> Let's do this one. You use your other foot to kick him in the head. Somehow you manage to kick him hard enough to knock him out. That was surprisingly easy. You drag him to the bathroom and close the door, holding the door shut, just in case. Finishing your call with emergency services, all you're left to do is hold the door shut and hope he doesn't wake up. It takes about half an hour for the authorities to arrive and take him away. After some questioning, you're allowed to rest easy. Hopefully, that's the last time you last of you'll see of him for a while. And in four, breaking and entry is illegal. By the way, yeah. So I'm gonna try just changing our passwords. Swallowing the saliva that had gathered in your throat, you spend a few minutes looking at the due dates again. This is definitely weird. You decide to change your passwords, all of them. By the time you're finished, unease still sits in your stomach like a rock. The feeling won't be going away anytime soon, so you decide to distract yourself. Closing the tabs except for one, you decide to spend the rest of the day binging a series you have been meaning to watch. Today is another day off. A good day to be active going out to exercise, whatever you want to or not. You recently found the bicycle that you had lost last week while walking home from work a day or so ago. In celebration, your friend wanted to go for a scenic bike ride on your day off. 
Right now, you're hanging out near the chair waiting for your friend. Headphones are in your ears playing your tunes. After a few minutes of waiting, you hear someone biking up and stopping next to you. It's your friend. Reading them, you two talk idly as you get ready for the ride. After a few moments, you're ready and head on your way. The weather was pretty good today. You feel lucky as a slight breeze refreshes your body. Not to mention the stunning scenery around you. At a few points on the, on the ride, you pause for a break and took in the scenery around you. Even if you weren't too thrilled about exercising today, the great weather and beautiful landscapes around you made up for it. After biking as much as you could, you eventually looped back around to where you started. Your friend stopped behind you, stretching tiredly and taking a sip of their water. As you took up your helmet, you watched your friend take their phone out. Now that you are closer to civilization, your phones have signal. Your friend tapped away on their phone as you stretched out your limbs. A few minutes later, there was a tap on your shoulder. Turning to your friend, you are met with a face painted with worry. Oh, what's wrong? I'm well. I think we are being tracked during our ride. What? Your friend raised her phone to your eye level? The screen showed a notification. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a problem with like iPhones, right? But like people just can just track you. That's so freaky. Ugh. An air tag was found moving along with you. What? Is it not your air tag? They shook their head. Let's check your bike. You lost it recently, right? Maybe someone planted it there? You nod reluctantly and turned to your bike. Oh my god. Searching that bike, you eventually come across a small air tag underneath the seat. Holding the small disc between your fingers, you think about your next course of action. Contact the owner. Throw it away. So I have more choices now. Um, throw it away. Let's hold on to it for now. This is definitely something you should look into. But maybe not right now. You don't want to worry your friend. I don't think I'll hold on to this for now. Wait, we held on to it? That's so dumb. Well, Harry knows where I live, so it doesn't matter. What am I saying? Your friend still looks worried as you pocket the air tag. Are you sure? Will we be okay? Yeah, I'll be okay, I promise. Let's head back. I'll text you when I'm home. You're sharing your friend. You grab your bike. Your friend still isn't entirely convinced, but grabs their bike nonetheless. You both head off after that, chatting along the way. After dropping your friend off at their house, you head on your own way back home. Spend the rest of the evening winding down to mentally prepare for work tomorrow. A few hours in a warm microwave dinner meal later, you settle down in bed. It's another day of work. Not a particularly bad one, nor was it good. You say you were rather ambulant and about it all. Better than last week, if anything, you suppose. Last, last week, you were tasked with a team project. Plus of how well you did when working in groups, it ended up being the most irritating project you had the displeasure of working on. The co-workers you had to work with were unreliable and arrogant, opposing any change you proposed. Working on the project itself was no problem, but having to work with team members made it an absolute drag. As a thought crossed your mind, you ran into one of the co-workers you had worked with on the project. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you could walk past, he grabs your shoulders and stops you. Huh? Hey, I'm really sorry about last week. I realized I was insufferable to work with, and it was absolutely my fault the project was botched. Think I could treat you to some food after this? Coworker, you're in trouble. Oh, I don't know. I insist, really. Anytime, any place you want. I'll be waiting outside after work, okay? You aren't given the chance to respond as he pats you on the shoulder and walks away. Well, it's not like you had any plans after work today, anyways. Free food doesn't sound half bad, either. You really didn't want to have a uh, microwave dinner two nights in a row. With the free food motivating you, you continue to go about the work day, looking forward to it. After you left work, you text your coworker to let him know you're outside. You look around. He's nowhere in sight. Now that's weird. Checking your text, you see that he's already read your message. You decide to wait around a little bit more, just in case. Five minutes passed, then ten minutes. Around the twenty minute mark, your patience was starting to wear thin. Before you can send another text, you receive two messages from your coworker. Can't make it, sorry, buy yourself something good. Oh my god. Get killed already? Fifty dollars. What? First of all, why is that his name on the app? Second of all, he can't make it? You're not about to climb the free fifty dollars, but on the other hand, it's a bit suspicious. His coworker wasn't one to just flake like that. He may be hard to work with, but he isn't unreliable. Let's look around for him or overthink for a second. That is weird, but let's just look around for him. Why not? Sure, a free meal is good, but a sh meal shared with another person is good too. 
You also can't have a worry that worry, but something is something has happened. It's only been 20 minutes or so. Maybe you couldn't have gone far. Picking a direction to walk in, you scan the streets as you walk. Not the best strategy, but it's not like you had a better one. You had no idea where the guy lived after all. Who knows? What if you get lucky? Every now and then, you call his phone number as you walk. It's unlikely, but there's a chance he may answer. This continued for a while. After a few minutes of walking, you called again. You passed by an alleyway as it rang. Slowing your pace, you lower your phone from your ear. It was faint, but you could definitely make it out. The ringtone was coming from deeper within the alleyway. Maybe it was just coincidence? Hanging up, you called the number again. Okay, not a coincidence. Putting your phone away, you walk deeper into the alleyway. A wave of uneasiness hits you as you get closer to the ring. Praying for the worst, you look around really quick and spot a metal pipe on the ground. You pick it up and keep venturing further in. During the corner, you feel your eyes bulge out of your skull as the smell of iron hits your nose. There lies your coworker with someone, something standing over him. You can barely make out the details of the scene unfolding before you due to how dark it was. How troublesome. Did I go too far? No, maybe not far enough. The figure standing over your coworker raises something. Oh my god, a bat. The way I would run over their head. Firefly kicks in as you rush forward with a yell, shoving the figure away from your coworker. Ugh. Looking down at your coworker, he was heavily injured with blood running down his face. Thankfully, it seemed like he was still alive. His chest heaved, heaved with effort. Looks like he was barely holding on to consciousness. Looking behind you, the figure from before is dragging you to his feet. Who? James? This guy knows me? Oh, I'm sorry for causing you trouble, James. You'll forgive me, right? Who are you? Oh, we have met. met. I mean, we have, but you probably don't remember me. But I remember you. You're standing up straight now, facing you. You can barely make out what he looks like. Blonde hair and dark brown eyes. This guy is familiar for sure. Sorry for troubling you. I'm sorry, James. You probably think less of me now, don't you? It's not my fault, is it? I just wanted to help. I'm sorry. The man staggers forward, bat dragging you on the ground. You're ready with your own weapon, shielding your coworker. Get out of my way, James. I hate to hurt you. No way. He needs a hospital. No, no, no. I'm really sorry about this. He lunges for you. Looks like there's no talking your way out. Defend yourself, turn your inner pro baseball player. Beat the shit out of him with the pipe. Beat the shit out of him with the pipe. Like a batter about to strike a home run, you swung the pipe as hard as you can at him. The man falls to the ground, knocked out for good this time. Hopefully you didn't kill him. Quickly take your phone out and call for an ambulance before checking on your coworker. Hey, are you okay? He's passed out too, breathing faintly. At least it looks like he'll survive. Probably. Dragging him out of the alleyway, you patiently wait for the ambulance. Looks like you won't be getting that free meal with your coworker anytime soon. Getting six, let's get food next time. <laughs> oh my god. So I'm just gonna ignore him, but like, oh well, I got free $50, so. Well, that's odd, but I suppose there's nothing you can do about it. After a bit of thanking, you decide to accept the money. On your way home, you decide to treat yourself to a restaurant you like. You make sure to bring home some leftovers as well. It's not anything special, but the food was good at least. You have to thank your coworker the next time you see him. Hopefully, the team next team project you work on will go better too. The week has come to a close, and time marches on towards the next day. This day has been nor as normal as ever, with no events landing standing out. Looks like your lucky streak has come to an end. Maybe the balance of Bad luck and good luck has been restored. Although the week was a bit strange at times. Some things raised your suspicions. In retrospect, maybe you should have been more curious. What would have gone differently had you not been so impassive and accepting of each stroke of luck? Well, nothing you can do now. It's not like you can rewind time and see what happened. Regardless, the thought will linger on your mind for a while. Ending 7. What a strange week. So I'm thinking about just contacting the owner. Do you think you could find out who this belongs to? Yeah, hold on. Watch your friend open up an app and plug the air tag from their ha from your hands. After a little bit, an email and phone number popped up. Changing a glance with your friend, you type the phone number into your phone. Should I text or call or maybe we should go to the cops? How much would the cops? I hope that use. I mean, the cops are pretty useless, but still. How much help would the cops be though? I don't. Know. I don't know. You could use them for protection. <laughs> 
After a bit of back and forth with your friend, you both agree on calling with the speaker on. You both head to a nearby cafe and sat outside, bikes leaning on the table. Taking your phone out, you look at your friend before gathering your resolve and calling the number. A ringtone can be heard nearby. It looks like your friend heard it too. Two of you look around before the ringtone is suddenly cut off. Someone answered the call. Hello? The voice on the other end sounded familiar. Exchanging a glance with your friend, you start talking. Um, hi. Hello. I found an air tag linked to this number. I was wondering if you lost it. Oh no, I didn't lose it. Is that so? Sorry for bothering you then. I put it there on purpose. What? I put it there on purpose. The air tag. Your friend looks thoroughly creeped out as you freeze up. Grip your spoon tight. What? Why did you? I put it on your bike. Something slams the table you're sitting at. Looking up, your friend has stood up scanning the area. Suddenly, they grab your phone. We know you're here watching us, you asshole. Come out. The other end has gone quiet. Hey, give it back for a second. You take your phone back. Can you explain yourself, please, if you're still there? I just wanted to make sure you were okay, that's all. What do you mean? As the voice on the other end explained their behavior, your friend was relentlessly pacing back and forth on the lookout for anything suspicious. At the end of the explanation, you sighed. This is way too creepy, but it sounded like you really didn't know that. Huh? No way. Hey, listen. Before you can get another word in, your friend snatches your phone again. You're a creepy dude. If you don't leave James alone, we'll take this up with the police. The other end went quiet again. Answer me. Click. They hung up. You take your phone back with a sigh. You think he'll actually leave me alone? No. He better. I was serious, you know. You have a real stalker in your hands. Yeah. You take the air tag back and look at it with a frown. Here, I'll hold on to it. Oh no, no, my friend. That way he won't know where you at. You are at at every walking moment. After you get off of work tomorrow, we should head straight to the police station. Yeah, let's do that. No, this is the dumbest idea ever. I'll walk you home, come on. You haven't realized how late it had gotten. Walking home, you chat with your friend to try and relieve the tense atmosphere. Get home safe, okay? You think having the air tag while the owner can still track you is the better idea? What is going on with these two? You send them off and walk them walk walk and walk when they're out until they're out of sight. Turn to your house, you unlock your door and step inside. Pushing your bike to the garage, you set it down against the wall and head in. Like it would have been better if your friend stayed with you because, well, I mean the guy already knows where you live. Starting to hit to heat something up for dinner, you head to the kitchen. You put in a frozen microwave meal and set the timer. It feels like someone is watching you the whole time. As your food heats up, you decide to close the curtains. However, the feeling of being watched doesn't go away. Before you can investigate anything, the microwave beeps. You take your dinner out and sit down to eat. It's been a long day and a warm meal will definitely help you feel more at ease. It takes a bit off. You don't really remember how long this has been sitting in the fridge. Maybe you should have ordered something instead. Oh well. After you eat, you wash the dishes and head to your room. Huh? <laughs> just, just randomly in their house? In the middle of your room stands a man. I think it's so funny. He looks like he's waiting for you. His face lights up as you enter your room. Finished eating already? How was the meal? What the hell are you doing in my house? Picking you up. What? I'm here to pick you up. I thought I should come a bit earlier than I initially planned. You know, since you guys plan to go to police and all, I can't have that happening. He sounds almost apologetic. Anyway, that's why I decided to wait here for you instead. Your head was spinning with confusion. Wait, what? You shouldn't be here. You need to leave. Oh, sorry, but that won't be happening. What? I told you already. I'm here to pick you up. He went away with nausea. You try to prop yourself up against the door frame. Oh, I thought there's something to the food. Suddenly felt dizzy and weak. The man walks over, arms out, and ready to catch you. Afraid you back up and try to get away, your attempt fails as you hit the floor. The last thing you see before you lose consciousness is a kind smile and contrasted by dark eyes. Handing five tagged. Oh my god, I, I don't think he went after a friend though, which is good, but like, not going to the police immediately is really dumb. Uh, it's just, what? Was going through our heads. Okay, so we, so I basically like, ramped up my paranoia about all the things like I chose chose choices that I wasn't really sure about what was going on basically all the weird things that were like happening to us but is there is that all there is to it after everything that's happened you feel uneasy anxiety welled up inside you 
Nothing bad even happened. There's nothing to feel bad about. In fact, you should be feeling grateful that all these good things happened to you. But you can't help it. Anxiety ripped at your heart, squeezing it as it beat faster. You felt sick. Suddenly, your surroundings felt overwhelming. Shutting your eyes and covering your ears, you forced yourself to breathe and calm down. Your efforts proved to be futile as your thoughts only raced faster. Taking your phone out, you scrolled through social media sites to try and distract yourself, but your mood only worsened. What could you do? As it in your mind, you suddenly got an ad while watching a video. Feeling depressed? Hopeless like nothing will work out? Does the anxiety you have for the future paralyze you? Seek help. Merely the ad sucked. All has all do as do all ads that you see on this website. But it got me thinking, maybe you should give therapy a shot. Surely the anxieties you have are just illusions. You just need help learning how to cope better. And hey, who knows, maybe therapy will actually help you out. Calming yourself down a bit more, you start looking into mental health services that are covered by your insurance. Eventually you find a good office and set up a starting appointment. Surely things will go well, surely. Trending, seeing you in therapy. Oh, oh, that makes a lot more sense now. So, Karis, this is the prequel to the other game. What was the other game called? I forgot. It's like that. The other game where he was a there, he was acting as her therapist. He wasn't really the therapist, and I don't think she. In that game, she didn't. Or her character, they didn't really um, recognize him. So he infiltrated the therapist's office some way, somehow, and was able to. I think we were able to escape though, but like successfully like kidnap us. So this is how it all started. <laughs> Whenever I play some of these games, it makes you think like, should I not be nice to anyone at all? Because some people are just like deranged or something. I don't know. Well, that is the end of Lucky Day. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye.